Strangers from distant lands, friends of old. You've been summoned here to answer the threat of Mordor. Middle-earth stands upon the brink of destruction. None can escape it. You will unite or you will fall. Here we are again as yet another franchise falls foul to that parasitic entity known as the modern day entertainment industry. But this, this is by far the biggest gamble of the lot. One gamble to rule them all, one might say. A franchise beloved by generations for its meticulous construction, unparalleled depth when it comes to character and story development, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series. How does one adapt such a mammoth-sized labyrinth of literature for television? Diversity, especially on screen as an actor, means a lot to me. Not like this. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> First, I'd like to start off by saying diversity in of itself is 100% needed and essential to the way we live and the way we enjoy life too. Imagine if there was only one restaurant in the world and it only served one type of food. Smell that. Yeah, I, I can could, I could smell it from here. <laughs> Imagine if there was only one colour of clothing to wear and it wasn't your favourite. Only one type of TV you could buy. Showing only one type of movie. Featuring only one act. Playing only one type of role. Badly. Turn on the radio. There's only one type of song you can hear. Because there's only one singer out there singing. <laughs> You go out on a blind date. Only it's not really blind. There's only one type of woman. Ah. And only one type of man. Maybe there's just women. Maybe there's just men. You get the message. True diversity is a good thing. True diversity. Not a good thing. It's being creatively bankrupt in an industry dependent on your creativity. Now it's true. Every culture should have its own law. Stories created to inspire, to lift you up, to amuse, to thrill, to whatever. Tolkien recognised this and decided to do something about it. Noting that the British didn't have a mythology of its own. So he created his own right from scratch. Bezos recognised this and decided to use Tolkien's work instead. Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I'll be the first to admit, when I first heard this show was announced way back when, I actually had hope. Do not trust to hope. It has forsaken these lands. <laughs> now he tells me. But it's true. I thought we'd get something that was better than The Hobbit, but below the expectations set by the excellent original trilogy. Sure, the continual mention of Game of Thrones in almost every interview of the showrunners should have raised more red flags than China's National Day. I thought they just meant it's going to be the next big epic thing on television. Yeah, that's not going to happen. If you're a law buff like me, I think it will be really interesting to see this kind of expansive look at Middle Earth. Though. The Vanity Fair article was released. Well, let's just say it was not short of surprises. Familiar yet completely different. It showcased some pretty bold casting and design choices. He got a fade like me! Fade like me, bro! He got a fade, why do I else got a fade like me? It wasn't a quote, it was an image, it wasn't an image, it was a quote. I mean, it's just like it's having a coming. premonition of a train wreck before it happened. <laughs> Even having the kahunas to ask the bold face question. Can we come up with the novel Tolkien never wrote? What the f***? And do it as the mega event series that could only happen now. So what does that mean? That could only happen now. Now what does that mean? Because we need to inject more POC characters. Black female dwarf that doesn't have a beard. That doesn't have a beard. That doesn't have a beard. My first concern here is that they will update this story to try and make it appealing to where we are presently. And what that means is putting elements in this story that were not part of Tolkien's original intention. But that wasn't the immediate issue. The immediate issue was a casting choice. It's what one. was the reason? Seemingly done for no other reason than to tick a few boxes come awards season. You can't even be considered 
uh, nominee or not be nominated unless you had this particular makeup of weird. None of that's based on merit. And because if you don't base your hiring practice upon uh, uh, merit, then this is exactly, exactly what, you, what get. you get. You, you, you destroying it, man. I'm looking at this first look. You have already destroyed, destroyed. what JRR Token on stood for, man. Amazon doesn't seem to want to tell a Middle Earth story. They don't seem interested in the lore at all, let alone respecting it. You're not doing this for me. You're not doing this for me. You're not doing this for my other ethnic friends, whether they're black, brown, Asian, or whatever. You know what you're doing? You're being condescending as What are your thoughts on the casting decisions? Um, I'm very excited for it. Do you want to know who else was giddy with excitement over the casting for this show? OneRing.net, once reputable fan site. Not to be confused with the still reputable fan site, the OneRing.net. Com.net sent out a tweet neatly coinciding with Black History Month. Congratulate Black performers who are going to be seen in the upcoming series. Only didn't quite have the effect they were going for. One of these things is not like the other things. One of these things just doesn't belong. What the hell are you? Fair question. I mean, it looks like a white guy with a black guy's head grafted onto his shoulders. I mean, was this intention? The two pictures aren't even in proportion to one. Just other. slapped Lenny Henry's head onto the body of Martin Freeman. Yes, Martin Freeman. Couldn't even be bothered to do a half decent job of it. Now, I grew up watching Lenny Henry. His comedy show was a staple in our household. But the One Ring.net have done to him in Black History Month, no less. Frankly, unacceptable. I mean, what would Sir Lenny say? <laughs> Heck, what would Martin Freeman say? Tolkien's work was always about being inclusive. You're wrong. I mean, we see it through the fellowship. You're wrong. Like a bunch of people from different backgrounds coming together in order to face a common enemy. No. <clears throat> okay, actually, kind of right there. I mean, look, I mean, what you're like, saying is did include, you know, many different races. Elves, dwarfs, hobbits, common folk. Uniting as But then the title of the first movie kind of gives that away, doesn't it? Like a bunch of people from different backgrounds coming together in order to face a common enemy. You know, the more I hear that, the more it reminds me of... In fact, I hadn't seen this much collective backlash since that embarrassing Marvel, Marvel project. Oh, yeah, you know, the one with the kid who suffers internet gas. Or I think it was his grandpa or something like that. Point is, token fans from around the world and fans of the original Peter Jackson trilogy came together as one to not only downvote Amazon's videos into oblivion. 6K likes to 160,000 dislikes. The ratio gets worse and worse every day. That was like ongoing in Russian and. Polish, Japanese, Hebrew. It, 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 it seems like m many languages are chiming in and just retweeting the same quote. Whether or not this was the exact quote he used wasn't the bigger issue for Amazon. I mean, they pretty much ignored everything he said anyway. The bigger issue is that this was now a global problem. The strength of that message was that everyone was unified using the same voice to say the same message, and there was nothing for them to grasp onto. That was a solid, clear wall, which all of their normal attacks and just accusing people of theists and phobes and everything, none of them had anything to grasp onto, because it was a comment more about the production itself and all the journalists which tried to attack those people failed. Although it didn't stop them from trying, mind you. But as we've seen time and time again, fans of the original series who are voicing what I think are these very reasonable opinions, they are already being called called bigots by the left-wing media who supports this show because they just love diversity. Corruption, Corruption and, manipulation. and manipulation. The articles just continue to roll in. You mean to tell me that they magically found these BBC audio scripts of Tolkien where he was going to adaptation and change some things for this radio show? Oh, you don't believe me? Then check this out right here. The Hoard of the Rings lost scripts for BBC Tolkien drama discovered. Decades before Peter Jackson directed his epic adaptations of The Lord of the Rings, 
J.R.R. Tolkien was involved with the first ever dramatization of his trilogy, but its significance were not realized in the 1950s and the BBC audio recordings are believed to have been destroyed. Yeah, wink wink. <laughs> they really think we're dumb, don't they? Amazon, you think we're dumb? Each attempt more desperate than the last in their efforts to smear or silence the voices that spoke out against them. Shame. Shame. Remember the good old days when it was the law profession was looked upon as uh, was seen uh, shady, morally grey, morally vacant even, at least in movies anyway. And your dad. He's a liar. You mean he's a lawyer? How times have changed. Nowadays, if the modern day journalists shill media sunk their teeth into that role, forever at the mercy of the big tech corporations who control them. And they own your ass. Journalism shouldn't be about left and right, it should be about right and wrong. It used to be the profession of exposing the truth at all costs. <laughs> yeah, those days are gone now. Now, nothing more than 21st century hitmen and women. Writing hit piece after hit piece. Sure, they get their early access, the odd goodie bag. But there's a trade off. Imagine having no voice, no individual thought, told when to move, how to what move, to say, when to say, completely at the mercy of their corporate overlords. 24 7. You gotta stay put. Until that moment come when their master's ready to. Whoa. Whoa, what is, Whoa. What is this? Whoa. Whoa. What are you showing? Anyway, it's becoming increasingly obvious that Amazon, as huge a global entity as they are, bitten off more than they could chew. Try as they might, they just couldn't put a foot right. But then of course they couldn't. Their heart was never in it. And if there's one thing modern day audiences can spot, is when a studio's phoning it in. Which is kind of at odds with what the billionaire owner of Amazon has gone on record as saying. With a Vanity Fair article even going as far as to frame it as a personal obsession. Isn't that right? Hell yes. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. The Mona Lisa has an estimated value of over 850 million dollars. Arguably one of the most famous and beloved paintings in the world. Imagine being so obsessed with that painting that you just you just have to have By it. all means. So you do you buy it. You buy it outright. $850 million. So now it's yours. You so own it. It's on your wall. You're staring at it. You're just mesmerized. Standing there. In awe. Magnificent. Ah, what a beauty. Suddenly, a thought occurs to you. Hmm. Do you know what's missing from this painting? Give us a clue. I know. Let's slap a good old-fashioned beard on her. Yeah, there you go. Add oh, some shades up in there. Why yeah. so serious? Red nose for Mona. Like a Rastafarian beanie. Yeah, yeah, appropriation be damned. Painting Da Vinci never painted. Hashtag inclusion. Only to turn around in an interview after and declare, I love Mona Lisa. She means the world to me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look, the point I'm trying to make is you either love something so much that you just cannot change a single thing about you it. You want to preserve everything about it in its original state of glory. Or you despise something so much you just have to change it. It just it cannot go unchecked. It cannot remain the same. Everything is subject to change. But it cannot, Amazon, be both. Why? Because they're two opposing views. It's like saying you're a staunch vegetarian who enjoys a good hamburger at a weekend. Hell yes. <laughs> Which brings us to the super fan video, Amazon's global solution, global prop, a series of fan reactions to the trailer, and about as authentic as a 12 pound note. These super fan reaction videos that Amazon Prime is putting out in different countries, in different languages, with these so-called Lord of the Rings super fans. I'm here with the Fellowship of Influencers who are talking about how great the Rings of Power show is going to be and how how amazing and diverse and everything it is. Rings of Power is the reason why the four of us are sitting here today. Of course it is. Look, mate, nobody's questioning your integrity. Clearly, you're here for the love of all things Tolkien. Sorry, Tolkien, my bad. All right, three words to describe the Rings of Power teaser trailer. Go. Okay. Eh, I'm 
I'm sorry, your time's run out. What do we have for the losers, Judge? 8,000 views and 1.4 thousand downvotes. We're seeing our first black elf, we're seeing the first female dwarf. Yeah, would you look at that, a bearded dwarf lady. And I'm very looking forward to like looking at that. I also want to know why they were fi why they were fighting. Who's fighting? Why are they fighting? I am wondering if and when any actual expert will also be in attendance. Do you think we're going to see another side of Sauron? Yes. Like maybe he falls in love. Every villain is a hero in his own story, right? I think right? we're going to find out more. Okay, okay, okay. I'm calling this. Real talk. Sauron is a bad guy. He makes Thanos look like a life coach. That's really what he's intended to be. What? A life coach? No. Bad guy, like ultra bad. If I was a gambling man. I would bet you this lot here have been told to talk up a storm about this character. Amazon are pre warning you what's to come. Why? Because in the series, well, my words, they're gonna try and make you like this. They're gonna try and make you root for They're gonna make this dude the star of the and show. And don't be surprised if they try and shoehorn in some weird thing with him and Galadriel. I'm telling you. I'm telling in you. terms of controversy, we ain't seen nothing. Yet. He's been warned. People are gonna fall in love with him and be like, I can change him. This has the Lord of the Rings fan base in an uproar because these people do not represent the vast majority of actual Tolkien super fans. Nope. They're just people who, to be fair, are just out to collect a paycheck. I guess we can't be too hard on them. Am I right, bro? That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. It's just gonna be really nice for them to be like, oh, hey, there's someone that looks just like me. Oh, hey, there's someone that looks just like me. I'm always fascinated when I hear that line outside of twins, triplets, quadruplets. I think only Django Fett is the other person who would be able to actually point to the screen and say, hey, that person looks just like me. Outside of that, with over 7 billion people in the world, it's one set of odds I don't quite fancy for some reason. Growing up, like I was still excited about being um, an elf or a hobbit and joining in with it. I wasn't represented like either like my disability or my queerness wasn't represented. No, 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 there you go again, trying to have your cake and eat it too. I've seen a lot of talking about my girl Galadriel. Yeah. The way we've seen her in the movies, she's been very like flowy, yeah. Yeah. serene, she's not doing much. Not doing nope, not doing much. not doing much at all. I'm not even going to address the guy having a whiz in the background. You gotta go, you gotta go. Okay, I just addressed it, but I'm not going to talk about it. Again, the fact they kept that shot in just sums up this whole fiasco. What was Amazon thinking? What was their plan? In the original film series, which I absolutely adored, but there are not many women oh, in it. Oh no, you can't, again, you can't absolutely adore something that you're actually against. I mean, it's just either you watched the original trilogy and you're like, hey, this is great, this is fantastic, I love it. I adore it. Or you watched it and you said, you know what, this is trash, there's not enough women in this. Pick one, stand by it. Women who are in it never speak to one another. This is true. This, I, I can't even, like, this, this is actually we didn't get to talk to one another Aww. probably because they were too busy doing this you crazy let's get up out of here what is that wait oh, it's oh, wrong. i gotta get out of here get out of here man i'm saying quick with me you mortal fools and this come get some <laughs> And not to mention this. I am no man. But no, you'd rather have them sitting around a coffee table, popping fashion tips, makeup tutorials, complaining about men. Come on, really? I mean, did you even watch any of those movies? I was trying, I was but every time I was like, okay, take a breath, something new would happen, and it was <gasps> It's just a matter of time until the actual truth came out regarding Amazon's true feelings towards this particular intellectual property. I caught wind of it via the ever-reliable Midnight's Edge. According to Brad Stone's Amazon Unbound, 
he never said, I want my Lord of the Rings. No, what he reportedly told his team of executives was, I want my Game of Thrones. It seems like they just want to tell a woke fantasy story, but there are no woke fantasy franchises that are popular, so they decided to use something people know, Lord of the Rings, call the show that even though it has nothing at all to do with Lord of the Rings, and then just ignore Tolkien's words and write whatever they want. There's something very cool with prequels. They can make you love the things you already love even more. Make us love the Hobbit films and the Lord of the Rings films and potentially the books as well. Oh, no, you didn't. Wow. Oh, no, you didn't. So what you're saying is this series making us to love the Hobbit, the original trilogy and potentially the books as well. Actually, if you think we don't already love them, okay, it may be true for the Hobbit. Oh my day. Oh my. Obviously, my reaction to their reaction is equally as false as their reaction. I mean, it's not like anybody bought into it. I mean, how can anybody think that this lot, mm -hmm. let's face it, probably never flicked through a single page of any of Tolkien's books. Sat through six Peter Jackson, nearly 12 hours running time for the original trilogy alone. Without, according to them, a shred of representation seen, only to emerge from the entire ordeal as super fan. <laughs> yeah, right. You trying to mug me off? The creators, producers, writers, uh, actors, actresses, everybody that's part of the project has no desire to honor any of that stuff. That m A lot of that stuff that you guys care about. Let's take a look at that term from the online dictionary. The example given has an extreme or obsessive admiration for a particular person or thing. Which begs the question, what about it are you currently obsessed with? Like Sauron is hot, I feel like people will be like, I can fix him. <laughs> okay, no, not, not you. You, you oh might say, said enough. Fact is, you're not fans of Tolkien. You're fans of Tolkien, it's a completely different thing. And that's fine, you do you, and I'll do me. Just don't use somebody else's work to do it. <laughs> but you just can't help yourself, can you? During the Second Age, this is where like Sauron comes in and he's like, yo. 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 <laughs> What's up? I'm gonna teach you how to make some rings. <laughs> Saying who cares, it's just a story, but it's like, if, if that's your opinion, who cares, it's just a story, we can do whatever we want, then why are you trying to make a prequel to this work that you clearly don't respect? Why don't you just make up your own fantasy world? Evil cannot create. They can only corrupt and destroy what good forces have made. That way you can have your representation, and it'll actually work because it's built into the lore. Good point. In fact, wanna know the weird thing about it all? Have the show been billed as a new IP inspired by Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings? Probably would have been fairly successful. Probably. Fairly. Keep it in mind, Amazon has enough money to hire any one of these writers to write an original treatment. Hire any one of these directors to direct it. Hire this studio to produce a special effect. And hire one of these musicians to score it all. Then you could have filled it to the brim with black elves, Chinese elves, Scottish elves, Polynesian elves, tall elves, short elves, musical elves. Thank you very much. The only limit being your imagination, which, to be fair, is pretty limited. Heck, you could even make the entire cast ethnic. Have it like a spiritual successor to Black Panther. Rivendell forever. <laughs> yeah, boy. yeah, boy. But no, you want to pop culturally appropriate. Every franchise you can get your greedy little hands on to. like it's your entitlement. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Because truth be told, the only people entitled to anything are the people paying your wages. And that's us. The customers. Representing 3,800 cultures across the world. Across the each world. with their own stories. Yet to be told. And they'll never be told. Why? No idea. Because <laughs> you have no intention of telling our stories. Shame. Shame. So please stop thinking you can just shove a black actor into a white character, fictional or other. Call it a day. Slapping yourself on the back like you've made some huge life affirming cultural impact. <laughs> you haven't. We can do better. I, I would I would rather do something original. Really? 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 The Falcon is a movie star.
Let me just think. You could have had this as an original IP, telling the story of this character, half elf, half human, shunned by either race, who rises up against all odds to become the greatest warrior and leader either race has ever seen. How about a story about? Dwarf woman becomes a queen. Yeah. She's born different. different. Yeah, like, like, maybe it's like she doesn't have a beard. Maybe it's because her hair's lopsided. Either way, she rises up against adversity to become the most respected queen in all the land. Or how about the tale of an elf woman who disguises herself as a male warrior and joins the Imperial Army in order to prevent her sick father from being forced to enlist? His, uh, I forgot, didn't I? These people don't actually respect Tolkien's work. They want to be able to do whatever they want in their own show, meanwhile still having the popularity that Tolkien's IP guarantees them. You guys care about that stuff. They don't. They don't care at all. Now, as this was being cut together, some disturbing yet predictable news hit the internet by um, Midnight's Edge, which you've probably heard by the time you've seen this. Ever though the time creators create and produce their own content, that time was now. We burned almost every physical book in the country. So by the time you guys grow up, there won't be one book left. Burn it. These corporations are going to continue to they've destroyed everything in pop culture that you love. If they haven't got to yours yet, believe me, they will. It's just a matter of time. Insanity. Just the one consolation we have I mean, it is fairly significant. That Amazon have been mass deleting comments, as exposed by YouTuber Desperu. This is something they've done over a few days when they thought no one was paying attention anymore. That, to me, implies it was deliberate. <laughs> They're like, no, we can't do this because if we delete it now, more people will make videos on it. This will get noticed even more. So what we'll do, we'll wait for it to die down, and then when no one will notice, that's when we remove them. And this is the great thing about the internet: someone will always catch you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shout out to him and Fatal J for hilarious yet informative videos. Check them out. But look, I'm pretty much done now. Before I go, my absolute favorite line of the entire fiasco has got to be when the host leaves us with this little zinger. You're just going to be transported to another world and you're just, you're just going to forget your own for the whole time you're going to watch it. You're just going to be transported to another world and you're just, you're just going to forget your own for the whole time you're going to watch it. <laughs> if only, brother. If only. Shame on Kiru. This was serious, but it turned into something fun. <laughs>